Thanks very much, uh, Eric. Um, that's a, that was a, quite a glowing bio, 25 years in the major mining space. I, I, I feel it should be somehow shortened to uh, George Salamis, um, survivor of three mining cycles, and that's what I am. Um, and to, to Eric Meyer's point earlier, and I understand as a, as a gold fund manager, uh, these aren't fun times, but these times will get better because they always do. Um, and the flip side, which is the other side of the industry which I work on, is uh, the tough part for us is, is fielding calls uh, on a weekly basis which kind of go like a shareholder ringing up and saying, uh, we really love your project, you've got a spectacular gold project in northern Quebec. Uh, can't wait to see you in production. Please, uh, no royalties, no streaming deals, uh, no loan arrangements, no debt, uh, and please don't dilute uh, the equity structure. And uh, boy, we can't wait to come to the mine opening. So uh, that, that, that presents a pretty tough uh, situation for the mining execs, but um, we're, in a, we're in a better position than most. Uh, if I reflect upon some of the things that um, we've accomplished since the last time we were here uh, presenting at this, at this conference, um, I think first and foremost is on the resource side. Uh, I think we really kicked a goal in uh, doubling our resource in just nine months from, from the previous resource estimate, uh, some news which I'll talk about in a bit. Uh, we've managed to uh, survive and thrive in terms of a share price uh, evolution. We're actually up 63% uh, year over year. Uh, we've tripled our market capitalization year over year. Um, in the last year, we managed to bring in a major mining company as, as an owner of the company, and uh, that's been a, a phenomenal feat for us. Um, and I think last but not least, uh, one of the, one of the uh, testaments to just how, how uh, tough we've been exploring and how hard we've been exploring, uh, we mounted one of what I believe to be one of the largest exploration campaigns, certainly in, in Canada in the last year. Um, we've got seven drill rigs operating now and uh, moving to 10. And if anybody wants to come and see what it's like to run 10 drill rigs, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's no mean feat. So we've actually done a lot um, on, on the exploration front, in fact, across the board. So here's the checklist of, of what uh, any good investor should look at uh, in terms of, of uh, how to make a, a savvy mining investment. And this is what we are. Uh, we're a high-grade gold story in one of the best jurisdictions, which is Quebec, uh, on the planet to explore and operate. Uh, we have got the infrastructure in place, uh, a mill, a 2,200 ton per day mill, which is just ready to, uh, to start processing our ore in the future. Uh, when I mentioned a positive uh, jurisdiction with respect to the government, the government of Quebec is perhaps um, one of the most supportive uh, governments in the world. Uh, they've been very supportive on a permitted, permitting basis and uh, everything that you'll see here from a, a, an exploration and development perspective is permitted. Uh, we are permitted to go underground uh, to begin the next phase of exploration on our assets. Now, one of the other things which I meant, uh, didn't mention earlier is uh, the fact that we did a PEA study or basically an economic snapshot in time of our assets in Valdor. And as you can see, we uh, netted some very positive economics, 77% uh, pre-tax IRR, um, $184 million uh, NPV. Now, these numbers are stale, they're old. And they're old because we, we have to update the study because we have upgraded our resource, in fact, doubled our resource. So our view is that these really spectacular numbers are actually just gonna get better. So we've got an asset we feel has the, the ability to produce about 100 to 110,000 ounces a year. Um, have a close look at that CapEx number of $62 million. Uh, we're in an era where a company's uh, market capitalizations are a small fraction of the CapEx that they need to raise. Uh, that's not at all the case in our, in our case, uh, largely because we acquired a mill for a, in a fire sale and uh, all in sustaining costs of about 600 US uh, per ounce. Uh, this makes it really one of the lowest CapEx, OpEx development stage projects on the planet. Um, resources will grow, I'll show that to you in a second. Uh, you as an investor or a potential investor, one of the things you want to see is, is steady news flow and I think uh, in terms of our exploration effort going forward, that is certainly going to be the case. Again, uh, 2016 is gonna be very active for us. Um, I think, again, in 2016, we'll have one of the largest exploration campaigns mounted, certainly in Eastern Canada, if not all of Canada. And last but not least, a strong partner in El Dorado. I'll get into that in more detail. So 
This is kind of the sizzle of the story, or the sizzle of the day. Two, uh, two weeks ago, we released our resource estimate, uh, updated resource estimate on the, uh, the sort of the key bit of the Lamac South property, which is called Triangle. And in a very short period of time, exactly nine months, uh, we managed to increase our inferred resources on the Triangle alone to 870,000 ounces, um, indicated resources to, uh, up by 21% to 627,000 ounces of gold, which all means that all told on the property, we passed the 2 million ounce mark of high grade gold uh, on the project. And, and one of the things that, that is a credit to our, our organization, especially from an exploration perspective, was the, uh, the amount of geological thinking that went into this resource estimate. And the real game changer that you uh, you might be able to see on this screen here, are those C structures, those vertical structures. It was basically the, the added component to the last resource estimate, which provided the uh, game changing or the nexus for, for us as a company. It was really the improved understanding and the addition of these vertical structures, which changed us as a company uh, and added to this resource growth. And it'll continue to do that as we go on in the future. Now, uh, this, is a, this is probably one of my favorite slides. Uh, we just produced this recently as a result of the resource estimate. And as a good Canadian, I have to put up the, the CN Tower in Toronto as a, as a bit of a, um, uh, a metric or a scale. Um, so I like to call this the three sisters. And uh, on the right-hand side, you have the Sigma mine, um, which was mined down to roughly uh, 1,800 meters, produced 4.5 million ounces of gold over a 75-year long history. That's, in fact, where I started my career in 1989. Uh, in the middle is the Lamac mine uh, that produced 4.5 million ounces, down, uh, roughly speaking, uh, almost half the distance, uh, probably one of the highest concentration gold deposits from uh, uh, in this part of, of, of Valdor on an ounce per meter, uh, vertical meter basis. And on the far left-hand side, we have Triangle. And as you can see, dimensionally, Triangle is certainly becoming a lot like its two uh, older sisters to the, uh, to the right there. We're very excited about this, uh, this Triangle discovery, which we made uh, only a few years ago, and it's going to grow. Now, uh, Eric Meyer sort of mentioned one of the, the you know, several hallmarks of what, what signals the bottom of uh, a market cycle. And for us, uh, I think one of the hallmarks of the bottom is the ability to do fire sale deals. And in fact, um, our acquisition of the Sigma Mill last year, which was a transformational uh, acquisition for us, uh, we feel that this is a perfect signal as a bottom, market bottom. Uh, and it's only in the bottom of the market where you can acquire basically $100 million worth of, of mine and milling equipment uh, that we can certainly use in the future for the, for the uh, total sum of about $8 million in stock and cash. So this was a real file, fire sale for us. And I'll get into the, the additional add-on or value-add aspects of this uh, as we go on into the presentation. But again, uh, you only see this type of deal um, at the bottom of a market. Uh, there are a few more out there, and, uh, but they won't last long. Now, I've talked a lot about exploration. And for obviously, for us, the next stage is, is uh, underground exploration, and which will lead on to development. And uh, while we've been doing this aggressive exploration project uh, on site, we've also been preparing ourselves to go underground. And in fact, um, in, a, in what I like to feel, in a very stealthy manner, in the last six months, we've spent about $6 million preparing the site to transition us to that next phase of underground exploration and development, eventually subject to further studies. And uh, this is a photo which was taken actually a couple of weeks ago uh, on site at uh, our portal, uh, which is preparing us to go underground. So we're actually taking the next step very, very seriously. Some more, uh, some more site uh, views of the infrastructure that's going up in place. In fact, we've got all the site surface infrastructure that we need uh, in place, power, water, uh, and now buildings and a portal uh, getting us ready to go underground. Uh, with respect to environment, environmental permitting, um, again, the Quebec government, uh, there is no other more proactive government on the permitting end than, than Quebec uh, on that end. So we are fully permitted to go the next step underground. Now, I mentioned this, this PEA or this economic snapshot in time, which we took uh, earlier this year, as you can see, 
for yourself, um, you know, the, the returns were, were quite spectacular, albeit at the PEA stage. We have to go the next stage, obviously. But the next step we are going to do is we are going to take that upgraded resource and we're going to redo the PEA calculation or basically take another snapshot in time based on the new configuration of those vertical C structures and, and calculate the economics. So while these numbers are sta stale dated, um, I think the guidance that we're giving is that these numbers will just get better. Um, how aggressive are we going to get on the expiration front? This is a uh, basically a parallel slice through a zone called C4, by far uh, the most uh, the healthiest zone that we have on the on the triangle zone itself. Uh, consider this to be an 800 meter by 900 meter uh, long sheet of high grade gold mineralization. Uh, the outer background that you see in red is the limits of the inferred resource, and the blue dots are basically where we plan to drill over the next year. And again, 100,000 meters of drilling uh, will be focused in and around this area. Uh, about 60, uh, actually about 60 percent of the drilling that we plan to do will be on the triangle zone alone. And I can tell you that um, there's going to be a lot of success to come in in those drill holes. Now. In terms of the value add aspects of, of that acquisition, uh, that $100 million worth of kit that we bought for $8 million, uh, what else uh, came with it besides a, a mill which was in pretty good shape? Well, what we discovered in the back vaults of this, uh, this milling operation, uh, literally speaking in, in a trailer in the back, were um, essentially a lot of data as you can see here in, the, in these photos but uh, six uh, very large hard drives, external computer hard drives. And when we plugged them in, uh, we found about six terabytes of digitized uh, data, basically dating back about 75 years uh, of the two pr past producing mines which produced nine million ounces of gold. So this was literally a gold mine in my view, um, you know, almost as valuable as the, the Sigma mill itself. But we had a bit of a, a, a conundrum here in terms of, of what we did with the data. We started to look through the data. Um, we, we had basically two choices, which was we either take that data and we, we distract our own geologists who were busy running uh, 10 rig drill programs with it and, and take their eyes off the ball there. Or the second idea, which was basically launch a contest. And that's the contest which we called the Gold Rush Challenge. and, and um, uh, it was been done only once before, very successfully by Gold Corp. In fact, some would argue it's what made Gold Corp in the early 2000s. Um, simply put, what we did is we took this six terabytes of data and we uh, open sourced it. And so we're letting um, the planet basically decide with this data in hand where to go next. And um, in exchange for that, we're offering a million dollar prize. And I can tell you that um, one of the things that I've been doing over the last few nights, in fact, I was up till about 2 a.m. last night reading, were some of the submissions that have come in from this contest. And some of them are brilliant. Some of these ideas are absolutely brilliant. Um, I've got no doubt in my mind that many, many more discoveries will come from these ideas. Um, obviously, with, the, uh, with sponsors paying the million dollar prize and, and these ideas that will be generated, the, uh, the IRR uh, on this, uh, this concept is going to be very high. Um, currently, we have about 1,280 people sign up for the contest, uh, about 80 teams, uh, a lot of them consisting of several uh, of the most well-known engineering firms and, and uh, geological engineering firms and, and consulting firms around the world wanting to make a name for themselves. So we should net a lot of really great ideas out of this. And just taking a step back to uh, what this data actually looks like, what you're seeing here is a snapshot, again, of uh, the Sigma and Lamac mines, again, 9 million ounces produced between both of these, these operations. Uh, this time on the left-hand side is Sigma, uh, on the right-hand side is the Lamac uh, ore body. And um, I'm going to show you a quick video of what this looks like. But basically what this is, is, is the culmination of a compilation of 40,000 drill holes, uh, half a million assays, uh, 200 kilometers of underground workings, stope layouts, stope designs, stope uh, face sampling, um, anything, anything you can imagine in that database. And uh, I'm just going to pull up a video and show you what that looks like. Um, that's what it looks like on a three-dimensional basis. Um, from a scale perspective, that's 1,800 meters to its uh, deepest depth. But one of the things that, that I'd like to point out to you that you really don't need to be a geologist, in fact, to point out is the existence of those vertical structures that you see there on the Sigma side. Those trends, 
of trending lines of, of red high-grade mineralization is exactly what they mined in the context of sigma. This is the first time anybody's ever looked at this as a package or one group of data. Um, and, and those of you in the audience have probably pointed out by now, there is a very distinct correlation between the orientation of those zones and what we're seeing at the triangle zone, further sort of showing the potential of triangle. So um, this is all pretty cool stuff for a geologist, by the way. Um, so th we're expecting to get a lot of uh, really good ideas out of this gold rush contest. It's going to culminate in an event uh, at the PDAC, which we think will, will be the go-to event um, of the PDAC in terms of announcing the winner, and the winner will, will have to present themselves and their idea to, uh, to a pretty tough panel of judges on stage then, so that'll sh that should be pretty fun. Uh, moving on to back to business, uh, strategic investment by El Dorado. Uh, I can think of no better stamp of approval uh, for any junior mining company than to have a, a major mining company like an El Dorado invest, uh, make a significant investment in us uh, on a use of proceeds basis. Uh, they believe in the expiration upside of our asset and they wanted to see this money go into the ground in the form of expiration and we, we couldn't agree more. Um, I can tell you that our uh, discovery cost per ounce is about $10, uh, whereas the, the market is currently valuing us at about $50 per ounce. So for as long as that metric exists, as long as that math exists, we will continue to explore aggressively. Um, currently we have a cash balance of $23 million, not 26, um, with uh, about $11 million of in the money uh, warrants uh, cur currently sitting up there. Catalysts to come, uh, about 100,000 meters of drilling in, uh, in 2016 planned, 10 rigs again, a uh, major, major uh, effort on the exploration front. And the next big uh, milestone, of course, is the next PEA update. So combination of news flow uh, every three, three to four weeks, uh, it's either going to be expiration results on drilling the high grade in and around uh, the triangle zone or um, uh, sort of development uh, or potential development or underground exploration related uh, news to come. Not to brag too much, but uh, this is where we were uh, the last time we presented in Zurich and Geneva uh, versus where we're at now. Uh, we're up 63% uh, versus, um, as, as Eric pointed out a few times in his presentation, a, a pretty dismally performing uh, GDXJ or any other measure. Uh, and I should point out that, you know, this isn't over. Uh, the game is certainly not over for us. Uh, that trend will continue, we feel, as we keep exploring aggressively and we, we transition uh, underground. Uh, no, yet another measure, um, you know, our market cap in the last two years um, relative to where we are at today. You can in fact throw pretty much any measure that you want to measure us against uh, that's resource related and, and uh, you know, we, we, beat, we beat it. Um, so Catalyst will remain through 2016. Um, last but not least, again, the investment highlights. We're a high grade story in, in a phenomenal jurisdiction in Quebec fully permitted to go underground, uh, compelling economics that are going to get even better uh, resource growth. We've managed to demonstrate that time over time. Um, lots of catalysts to come and a very strong partner at our side. Uh, thank you very much.